This is Andy Purrell for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to be joined by former amateur standout Kez Ashfak over Zoom. Kez, first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, just like to say, I've just uh, finished a little shakeout session um, before I go into the bubble tomorrow. Kez, it's fight week. <laughs> how does it feel to hear those words? That's obviously what's been, uh, what I imagine has been a frustrating seven or eight months, obviously before then, since you last been back out. Yeah, it's great because, to be honest, I heard it. I heard it's fight week in April as well, but <laughs> fight got cancelled. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's great to hear that again. And I'm hoping you know everything goes well now and uh, go out there um, and get a good win on Saturday night. We'll obviously come on to the fight itself uh, in, a, in very shortly, but let's just kind of go back over these these past six or seven months. We haven't had a chance to catch up over over this period. How did how did you find lockdown and how did it affect your training, if at all? To be honest with you, lockdown wasn't too bad for me. Reason being, um, me and my miss had a baby, uh, so. I'm, I'm, I'm a father now as well, so that's, that was so great. It gave me, gave me that chance to spend time with, with, with uh, my son and uh, bond with him before getting back into training camp. But yeah, it affected training. You know, for example, with Angel, we kind of decided in April that we were going to train together. I think it was April or something like that. Um, so the first couple of months was him FaceTiming me, telling me what to do and watching me and all that sort of stuff. But um, obviously now it's a lot easier now that we can train together again. But yeah, it affected training. And it was hard not to keep the pounds off, but Angel kept me busy, and it was, I was getting uh, sessions to do and runs to do, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. I mean, first and foremost, obviously, congratulations on the new ball. Um, how, how are you finding the actual fatherhood then? And again, what kind of obstacles has becoming a father kind of given to you to kind of, to have to work around with regards to your boxing schedule? Yeah, because obviously you've got you've got to make time for both uh, your family and um, and boxing. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, at the moment it's not giving me too many problems or anything like that in terms of uh, the baby or keeping me awake or anything. But it is tough because obviously when I'm in camp, um, in Loughborough, I love the uh, Loughborough Uni, Monday to Friday every day, sorry, every week, sorry. So um, I'm, I'm missing through the week, uh, but it's always great to go back and see him on the weekend. Let's obviously move towards um, kind of a bit close towards your fight, but talk about camp with Angel. How have you found working with him and obviously being able to get back into the gym? Camp's been great. Obviously, we've got Angel and uh, we've got Mikola, um, the, the Ukrainian geezer, who's another coach. That starts the setup now. We've got, and we've got a good, good set with the boys, Charles Frankham, uh, Richard Riakpo and Sultan Zorbek as well. So, yeah, it's, it's been a great camp. I'm, I'm, I've been enjoying it. I'm, uh, I feel fresh. I feel like I'm I've got a lot to, to show on Saturday. I'm looking forward to going out there and showing it and, like I say, getting the win Saturday night in style. Angel's really started to gain a lot of recognition over the past few months, particularly on the back of him teaming up with Anthony Joshua. What is it for yourself, though, in particular, that's kind of stood out with regards to what he coaches into you? So, to be honest, the, the initial attraction, I guess, came from me just seeing him uh, taking Sultan on pads on, on Instagram. And I like, I like the, the, what he was doing. I got talking to him, and I, and, I, and I liked his philosophy to do with, with boxing and the fact that he's always willing to learn. And that's, I mean, I believe that's a great coach. It's the same with a great fighter. You've always got to be willing to learn, no matter where you are, what you're watching. Um, there's always something you can take out of it, and, and, I, and he, he believes that as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, I just liked his philosophy and the way we're working now. Is very, it's a lot of technical stuff, but a lot of very smart. Um, what's the word? S and C side and stuff and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's been great work with him. Let's obviously get into the fight week then. I'm going in against Mark Leach, a former a former campmate of of yours as well. Um, first of all, just talk to me about when when this fight was first mentioned and how long you've known about it. So it was a weird one because um, I think it must have been about eight people that uh, didn't want the fight, um, and I believe Mark was getting ready he, to, to fight Kasper Rook. I'm not sure what happened there, I'm not sure why it didn't happen, anything like that. But um, yeah, and then we got, we, they were like, listen, Mark Leach, what do you think about fighting him? And at first I was like, you know, he's, he's a mate of my blah, blah, all that sort of stuff. But I'm not really one to shy away from a fight anyway. And uh, we were getting told that, listen, Mark Leach, his, his team will take the fight as well. And I was like, well, but I'll need a fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> I need an opponent. 
Um, and I want to start getting busy again. So if it's Mark Leach, it's Mark Leach. Is it weird knowing you're going into the ring with somebody who's obviously a former camera of yours, as you mentioned, you know, a friend of yours as well? What's the mentality heading into a bout like that? See, the good thing really is the fact that obviously Kel, Kelvin Travis was my main coach back then and his main coach were Jamie and Nigel. So it's not like we were like, you know, fully, fully in camp together, if that makes sense. We were in and around the gym a lot and we shared a few rounds, but we weren't fully, fully in camp together. So... I probably wasn't as close to him as like a maybe with the lads now, like Charles and Richard and Sultan. But, um, and that helps. But either way, it doesn't, that just doesn't matter because even like on the GB team, for example, I box people out that were friends of mine that were trained together, tra trained together with and you just got to go in there and uh, remember that you've got to be a killer in there and it's, and it's uh, kill or be killed. And uh, you've, got, you've got to take that mentality to the ring. I actually spoke to Mark earlier and you touched on the sparring. He just said they're very, very technical and he could probably imagine something similar happening in your fight with him come Saturday. Is that what you're imagining? You expect me to be kind of a very much a, a technical kind of fight? Oh, well, I can't give away too much. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it could be. Well, it's, it's, yeah, I've kind of like, like I say, when I, was, I was talking before and I was saying I can't really take too much from the sparring. Reason being, firstly, it must have been about two years ago. A year and a half, two years ago. So a long time ago, first of all. On top of that, sparring, sparring, you can't really take a huge amount from there anyway. Um, you don't know how much he was putting in. He don't know how much I was putting in the sparring. Um, but like, what I do know is he can be an awkward and, and sharp customer. So I've just got to be aware of that. And uh, as long as I get my tactics right, I believe, like I said, I go out there and get a convincing and I'm hoping a stylish win. Are you feeling any pressure heading into the fight on Saturday? I know it's been such a long time since you've been able to get back into the ring. We've seen some brilliant fights as well return uh, to the, the UK boxing scene. And you've got Lomachenko Lopez, which also happens to be on Saturday as well. You know, right, yeah. to see the big fights coming up now. Are you feeling the pressure yourself to deliver something that the fans will enjoy? Um, I think boxing, is, it's a sport about pressure anyway. It's not, it's not, for me, it's not about if, you, if you're feeling pressure. It's more how you deal with it, and uh, yeah, obviously there's, pre there's pressure to to go out there and perform and uh, and look good and you know get the win. But like I say, you've got you've got to know how to deal with the pressure, and I believe I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty good at that, as you've probably seen me before. Fight week, day before the fight, day of the fight, after the fight, I'm I'm me. You know what I mean, I'm 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 relaxed. I you know I do I do what I, what I do best, and uh, yeah, like I say, it's God willing, I go out there and get uh, get get the win Saturday night and uh, perform as as well as I can. As well as I know, I'm more than capable of. And uh, later on, that later on after the fight, you think to yourself, pressure. What's pressure? <laughs> I know you're getting ready for. Well, I say getting ready for, but it's also an eliminator for the British title. I know you've got a, you've had a, a close eye on that title for a while now. Is that very much the route you expect to take? That provided Saturday goes to plan, you won that British title about next with Brad Foster, I believe, holds a super bantamweight title. Yeah, definitely. I want I want to fight Brad Foster. I want to I want to win the title. It's not so much about Brad, Brad Foster for me. Um, it's just what I want. I want that title, and uh, it's a stepping stone for me, in my opinion. And like I say, I believe my ability. I believe in how good I am, and I, I believe I can not just win a British title, but I can win a Commonwealth European and a World title, and uh, that's what I'm looking to prove. What do you make as, of Brad as a, a fighter? Obviously, he had two successful victories over... Well, he's had a draw and then a, a victory over Lucian Reed, a very convincing victory when he stopped Lucian Reed in the second bout. And then he fought uh, on Frank Warren's first show back behind closed doors. What have you made of kind of Brad's career and him as a fighter? Brad, to be honest, to be honest I thought he lost the first fight against Lucian Reed, in my opinion. Uh, second fight, obviously, he won't, he won't convince me. He, he, he made the change, and uh, that was great to see. But I, I think he's, he's an improving fighter. I think he's a, a good, tough, clever kid. Um, his last fight, in my opinion, his opponent wasn't up to scratch. It was obviously a, a little bit of a comeback fight on uh, behind closed doors. But yeah, I think he's a good fighter. I think he's, uh, he's talented. Um, but at the same time, I believe I'll beat him all day long, and that's my true opinion and that's why I need to go out there win this fight Saturday and hopefully get hold of him and, and prove that as well
Kez, I'm sure as an amateur you've boxed in many an arena where there haven't been many spectators there travelling the world and what have you, but going into this fight, Boxing Behind Closed Doors, do you expect it to be any different or to feel any different, knowing that it's a pro ranks and you haven't kind of been <clears throat> used to that in your career so far as a professional? The thing for me is, no matter if there's a million people in that arena, I only hear certain, certain, certain uh, voices and two of them will be in the corner. Normally I hear my brother and aunt and all that sort of stuff. He obviously won't be there, but as long as I can hear the corner, it will not make a difference to me. Um, like, see, I'm going out there and the crowd's never bothered me too much, um, whether it's a big crowd or a little crowd. And yeah, like, see, I'm used to it in, in the amateurs being all around the world and finding arenas that are not many people in there. But um, yeah, it doesn't make a difference to me. As long as I can hear the corner, I'm happy. Okay, so just a final thing I just want to touch on before I do let you go. We mentioned earlier Vasil Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez. A brilliant undisputed fight at £135. Just break that down for, break down that fight for me, Kez. How do you actually see that one playing out? So Lopez, obviously, huge one-punch um, knock artist. But the Matrix is out to it. <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't hit Lomachenko. And if you do get lucky... It won't be with, with those swings that Lopez throws, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I think I think Lomachenko wins that fight comfortably. And I would not be surprised if down the line uh, Lomachenko stops Lopez. Kez, we'll leave that there and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, final Thank words you yourself, me. though, for everybody who's going to tune in and watch our interview. For everyone who tunes in to watch your fight on Saturday, what would you like to say to them? Stay tuned. I'm looking forward to uh, an excellent performance on Saturday and uh, I'm going to go out there, get the win, God willing, and uh, move on from there and win that British title. Guys, appreciate your time tonight. Obviously, best Thank of luck with the rest of the week and, of course, fight night. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you very much. Top man. 